Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Draculic and in this video tutorial I'm gonna be showing you how you can uh, squeeze a metallic can, all right, how you can deform it. So here is my scene and you can see that my metallic can, if I switch over to the set it uh, view mode, uh, my uh, metallic can has a rig inside it. So we're going to be starting from with a new scene and I'm going to be showing you how, how you can do this in just a while. So, first thing I want to do is to add an armature to this uh, metallic can over here. So I'm pressing Shift A, I'm adding a armature, single, single bone. And then I'm tapping into it mode, I'm uh, making it to have the height, roughly the height of the metallic cans. Then I'm selecting this bone here, I'm pressing W to subdivide it once. And then I'm selecting this top bone over here and I'm pressing W to subdivide this bone once more. Now I have made an armature uh, with three bones. Next thing I want to do is to parent uh, the metallic can to the armature. So being in object mode, I'm selecting the metallic can, shift the armature, and I'm pressing Ctrl P, and I'm selecting with automatic weights. Parent with automatic weights. Click on that. So now, as you can see, if I move the armature in the uh, pose mode, you can see here is the pose mode, if I rotated it, you can see that the metallic can is being deformed as well. Now, next thing I want to do is to add an empty to my scene, so empty plane axis. I'm placing the empty somewhere over here, and I want for this empty to be the target for the uh, stretch to constraint that I'm going to be applying to the bottom bone of this armature. So I'm selecting the armature, Control tab to switch over to the uh, pose mode for the armature, and I'm getting over here, you can see, to the uh, bone constraints panel, and I'm adding a bone constraint stretch to. I'm setting the target to be the empty object that I've just added, and then I'm unchecking, I'm deactivating the volume option over here, so none. Set this to none. Okay, so now if I moved the empty, you can see that the whole metallic can is being deformed. You can see that better in the shaded view, I guess. So that thing here. All right, now uh, I need to do some more, some other modifications as well. So I am selecting this, uh, this top uh, little bone over here and I want to head over to uh, the bones panel, bone da data panel. So I am searching for something uh, relations, writing relations here, so I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm deactivating the inherent rotation and scale option. So if I now rotated this middle bone, you can see that, you know, the metallic can is now being, is being deformed. Let me show you this into the shaded mode so you have a better idea. All right, now, having done so, uh, next thing I want to do is to uh, add some keyframes to the empty object so that I can uh, make this, uh, you know, this uh, move here. So uh, I'm heading over to the first time of, uh, to the first keyframe of my animation, and I'm uh, I'm 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 going over here to this little tube icon for the empty uh, for the empty, and I want to add two keyframes for the Z Z location of the empty. So I first adding a keyframe here for the uh, for the first keyframe of my animation then I'm heading over to the last frame of my animation and I'm uh, I'm moving it somehow like so somewhere here maybe and I'm adding a new keyframe all right a new keyframe to uh, to my Z location to the Z location of my empty all right so now if I play back the animation you can see that we have that kind of deformation but this is not realistic because usually the metallic cans they 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 not deform they don't deform in such a linear fashion they deform in a step in a step by step fashion rather so we're going to be dealing with that later on so uh, next thing I want to do is to go ahead and stop the animation select this middle bone here and I want to uh, go over here to the bones data uh, you know panel to the transform sub panel and I want to set two keyframes for the rotation of this bone. So uh, let's say that at the first fr frame of my animation I need to add a, a, a single keyframe here, all right? And then I want to rotate it uh, 
in uh, I'm heading over to the last frame of my animation. I'm 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 changing. I'm rotating somehow like so, perhaps, and I'm adding a new single keyframe. So now I have this kind of thing. Again, this is not so realistic because it's linear. So next thing we want to do is to take care of of, of that. So I'm selecting my uh, my empty. I'm splitting the main window here and I'm, I'm bringing up the graph editor here. So you can see now, having selected the empty, this Bezier curve here, which is actually uh, the, the, the curve of the, of the, of the z-location uh, move uh, 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 of, the, of the empty. So I need to press N to bring, bring the uh, side panel here, and I need to add the modifier to this uh, curve here. So I'm adding a modifier stepped interpolation. And uh, I need to give it a step size of uh, high enough, something like 20, 20, 27, 20, 28 maybe, all right, something like so. You uh, can see now, if I play back the animation, that the, at least we have a step-by-step -step, uh, move for the empty, uh, and, and uh, we need to do the same thing uh, for the bone later on. But before getting there, I need to add a, uh, another modifier to the to the empty, which is going to be a noise modifier. And what this does, it adds a feeling of uh, of, of some elasticity. All right, as you as you are going to see, I want to change the type of blending to add. I want to set the uh, the, the the size or the or the scale maybe to something like minus. 0.6 and the strength to something minus 0.5 perhaps. All right, uh, you can experiment with that. You can play around. That did you find what uh, suits uh, what uh, suits to your needs? So next thing I'll do is to play around with the influence factor for the for the uh, for the uh, for the step modifier. So I'm heading over to the step modifier, finding the uh, use influence button here. Click on that and scroll up the slider. So you can see now here the curve. As, as you scrub the slider here, uh, you can see the influence of the, of, the, uh, of the noise modifier underneath. Okay, so play around with that until you are satisfied with the result. You can play also with the, user, use, uh, with the influence of the noise modifier. So by controlling those two, by adjusting those two, you can find a, a nice, nice, you know, elastic deformation you can give it. So, but I want to certainly restrict the frame range for the noise modifier. And so I'm using the restrict frame range. I want for this to start, to say, at the frame 25. So at the very first frames, we don't have any noise modifier. All right, you can see. All right, so we have something like, like so. All right, now, uh, next thing I want to do is to add uh, some ripples, some uh, creases here, uh, because the surface, you can see now, the surface for the, um, for the metallic can is very, uh, very soft, very very smooth. So I want to make it more rough, all right? As in the real world, metallic cans. So I am going uh, ahead, and I'm let let me uh, let me move this a little bit up. So I need to add some shape keys. So talk about shape keys. You have to select uh, your uh, metallic can. You have to go over here to this little triangle over over here, which is the uh, the data for the mesh. Okay, and head over to the shape keys, and I want to add a first shape, shape key, which is going to be the ba basic shape key, and give it the name uh, can uh, undeform it. All right, okay, so this is my first shape key, and then I need to add an yet another shape key, which uh, in to which I'm giving the name uh, can squeezed, squeezed uh, one. And then uh, I want for this shape key here, uh, I want when, when the, 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 the metallic can is squeezed uh, like so, I need to add some wrinkles, some creases here and there. So I'm tapping in that mode, I'm selecting, let's say, those vertices. And I, I'm going to be deforming now my can. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm enabling the proportional falloff from down here, enable this, and I'm selecting as a proportional editing falloff the random option. So now I need to do something like so, all right, you get the meaning. And perhaps I'm, I want for the, 
for the backside vertices to add some, you know, some kind of uh, this effect here. So now, in order for you to have an idea of the final result, you have to go down here to the value uh, for the shape key, and you need to set this all the way up to one. So you can see now how it looks like, much much more realistic, perhaps. So now I need for this value to. Uh, for this shape key, I need uh, the value to be at the first frame of my animation to have a value of zero. So I'm setting a keyframe here. And then somewhere in the middle, perhaps somewhere here, you can, uh, I mean, you can experiment with that. You can play around with that. I need for this to, 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 to get its uh, highest, its peak value. So I need to add yet another keyframe here. So now if I play back the animation, we have an additional deformation, as you can see. Now I need the second shape key, and I'm going to be adding yet another shape key here, which I'm going to be naming uh, can squeezed uh, two. And for this shape key, somewhere here in the middle, I want for this shape key uh, to have a, a value of zero. So I'm adding a keyframe here, and then I, first of all, I need to, 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 uh, to shape the shape key, actually, to, to sculpt the shape key. So you can go as far as uh, adding a random deformation of the vertices by selecting all of the vertices and select from this side panel here, randomize, all right, if you want, okay. And then you could select, for example, um, uh, these top vertices over here, and you could play around with the uh, rotation, perhaps adding some more you know, uh, some more variation to the uh, to the deformed shape, and always you want to see the, f the 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 final result by bringing the value all the way up to uh, one. So now we have this kind of deformation. I I want for the, for this shape key to start at the uh, start uh, at the at the, fr at, at the middle of my animation, and as we go t towards the end of my animation, I want to finally gets its uh, peak value. So for the last frame of my animation, I'm setting the value to one. I'm inserting a keyframe. So now if I play back my animation, you can see that I have also uh, uh, not only the deformation of the, due to the, to the, to the armature, but also deformation to, to, due to the shape keys. But the, uh, uh, this is not so realistic looking because still have a linear uh, shape keys you know, deformation. So I need to do the same thing for the values of the shape keys as well. I need to add to them some uh, stepped uh, modifiers. So I'm, I'm, I'm selecting the, uh, from the graph editor, I'm selecting the value can squeeze to one, uh, and I'm adding to it a stepped modifier. And I want also to, for this modifier, to set the step to something like 28 maybe something like high enough, and the same goes for the other uh, value. I'm adding a stepped modifier, 28 maybe, and now you can see that even the deformation is synchronized with the movement of my metallic, uh, with the deformation of the armature, due to the armature, rather. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you learned something from this. Of course, there is a lot of room for you to experiment and find your own implementation of this technique. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from this. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with another hopefully interesting topic. Hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.